Welcome to Lights Out at Houston Public Library. Tonight I'm going to tell you the story of The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. It's true. Yes, I've been ill, very ill, but, but why do you say that I've lost control of my mind? Can you not see that I am full control of my mind? Is it not clear that I am not mad? Indeed, this illness only made my mind, my feelings, my senses stronger and more powerful. My sense of hearing especially was more powerful. I could hear sounds I'd never heard before. Sounds from heaven and sounds from hell. Listen. Listen, and I will tell you what happened. You will see, you will hear how healthy my mind is. It is impossible to say how the idea first entered my head. There was no reason for what I did. I did not hate the old man. I even loved him. He never hurt me. I never wanted his money. I think it was his eye. His eye was like an eye of a vulture. The eye of one whose terrible birds had watched and waited until the animal dies and then fall upon the dead body and pull it to pieces with it as it ate. When the old man looked at me with his vulture eye, a cold feeling went up and down my back. Even my blood went cold. And so I finally decided I would kill the old man and close his eye forever. So do you think I am mad? A madman cannot plan, but you should have seen me. During that week, I was as friendly to the old man as I could be and warm and loving. Every night, about... 12 o'clock. I slowly opened his door, and when the door was open wide enough, I put my hand in, and then my head. In my hand, I held a light covered over with a cloth so that there no light showed, and I stood there quietly. Then carefully, I lifted did the cloth just a little so that a single thin small light fell across that eye. For seven days I did this, seven long nights, every night at midnight. Always the eye was closed. So it was impossible for me to do my work, for it was not the old man that I felt I could kill, it was the eye, that evil eye. And every morning I went to his room, and with a warm, friendly voice, I asked him how he'd slept. He would not have guessed that every night about twelve I looked upon him as he slept. The eighth night, I was more than usually careful as I opened the door. The hands of the clock moved more quickly than my, did my hand. Never before had I felt so strongly my power. I was now sure of success. The old man was lying there, not dreaming, when I was at his door. Suddenly, he moved in his bed. You may think I became afraid, but no. <laughs> Darkness in his room was thick and black. I knew he could not see the opening of the door. I continued to push the door slowly and softly. I put my, in my head, I put in my hand with the covered light. Suddenly, the old man sat straight up in bed and said, Who's there? I stood quite still. For a whole hour I did not move, nor did I hear him again lie down in his bed. He just sat there listening. Then I heard a sound, a low cry of fear that escaped from the old man. <gasps> now I knew he was sitting up in bed, filled with fear. I knew that he knew I was there. He did not see me there. He could not hear me there. He felt me there. And now he knew that death was standing there. Slowly, little by little, I lifted the cloth until a small, small light escaped from under it to fall upon, to fall upon that vulture eye. It was open, wide open, and my anger increased as it looked straight at me. I could not see the old man's face, only that eye 
that hard blue eye and the blood in my body became like ice. Have I not told you that my hearing had become unusually strong? Now I could hear the quick, low, soft sound, like the sound of a clock heard throughout the wall. It was the beating of the old man's heart. I tried to stand quietly, but the sound grew louder. The old man's fear must have been great indeed. And as the sound grew louder, my anger became greater and more painful. But it was more than anger. In the quiet night, in the dark silence of the bedroom, my anger became fear. For the heart was beating so loudly, I was sure no, someone would hear. The time had come. I rushed into the room crying, Die! Die! The old man gave a loud cry of fear as I fell upon him and held the bed covers tightly over his head. Still his heart was beating. But I smiled as I held that success was near. For many minutes that heart continued to beat. But at last the beating stopped. The old man was dead. I took away the bedclothes and heard my, held my ear over his heart. There was no sound. Yes. <laughs> he was dead. Dead as a stone. His eye would never trouble me again. So, you say I'm mad, you say? You should have seen how careful I put that body where no one would find it. First I cut off the head, then the arms and legs. I was careful not to let a single drop of blood fall on the floor. I pulled up the three boards that formed the floor and put the pieces of the body there. Then I put the boards down again, carefully, so carefully that no human eye could see that they had been moved. As I finished this work, I heard that someone was at the door. It was now four o'clock in the morning, but still dark. I had no fear, however. As I went down to open the door, three men were at the door, three officers of the police. One of the neighbors had heard the old man's cry and had called the police. These three had come to ask questions and to search the house. I asked the policeman to come in. The cry, I said, was my own in a dream. The old man, I said, was away. He had gone to visit a friend in the country. I took them throughout the whole house, telling them to search all, search well. I led them finally into the old man's bedroom. As if playing a game with them, I asked them to sit down and talk for a while. My easy, quiet manner made the policemen believe my story, and so they sat talking to me in a friendly man way. But although I answered them in the same way, I soon wished that they would go. My head hurt, and there was a strange sound in my ears. I talked more and faster. The sound was clearer, and they still sat and talked. Suddenly I knew that the sound was not in my ears. It was not just in my head. At that moment I must have become quite white. I talked still faster and faster, and the sound, too, became louder. It was a quick, low, soft sound, like the sound of a clock heard through a wall, a sound I knew well. Louder it became, and louder. Why did the men not go? Louder, louder! I stood up and walked quickly around the room. I pushed my chair across the floor to make some more noise to cover the terrible sound. I talked more loudly, and still the men sat and talked and smiled. Was it not possible they could not hear? No. They heard. I was certain of it. They knew. Now it was they who were playing a game with me. I was suffering more than I could bear from their smiles and from that sound. Louder. 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 Suddenly, I could bear it no longer. I pointed to the boards and cried, Yes, yes, I killed him. Pull up the boards and you shall see I killed him. But why does his heart not stop beating? Why does it not stop? Thank you for joining us for Lights Out. I hope you'll come back again. Goodbye.